Hi everybody, Lars Christensen here. Let's talk about Inventor. More precisely, let's talk about Inventor HSM. That's when you're doing CAM right inside of Inventor. Now, Autodesk offer this all the way up to five axis and turning. But what we're gonna look at today is the two and a half axis package. And that is actually free, so that's pretty cool. So if you haven't heard of that, you can go to cam.autodesk.com. Should be a link right up here. And uh, you can go and download this and of course return to this video. Now, one thing I wanna point out is that um, this video series is gonna concentrate not only on the how. So there's a lot of how videos out on YouTube, so button clicks. But we're also gonna talk a little bit about the why. And that comes before the how. So why are we doing certain things when it comes to machining? So that means that if you are a very experienced uh, CAM, CNC program machinist, you might have to fast forward a little bit, but if you're new, then I think you will really find some of this uh, information, maybe a little bit helpful, a little bit of tips and tips and tricks and stuff. So uh, in these few videos here, let's uh, dig into it and uh, actually uh, do some camps. I'll show you how easy it is. So why don't you check out what I have on the screen here and let's get going. All right, so here I have this really cool BAC mono race car. No, we're not going to machine this one, but it's a pretty cool model. I had to show it. So, of course, this is inside of Inventor. I'm using Inventor uh, 2016 here. But inside of this um, uh, BAC mono, of course, there's a lot of parts uh, that can be machined. So if we're just looking in the cockpit. Down here, we have uh, the pedal assembly. So that's one of the things that is neat about being inside of Inventor is that you have like these capabilities to like model things up. So um, even if you're a machinist, you can really find this helpful when it comes to like making fixtures and jigs. Think of it like this, that, you know, this is really the best CAD CAM, true CAD CAM solution out there. You have the best CAD with Inventor and then you have the best CAM with uh, HSM. There's no other system where you're really gonna get, you know, that powerful CAD and CAM. And like I said, from a CAD standpoint, uh, you can really use that for a lot of fixtures. Um, so here we have this pedal uh, assembly for the BAC Mono. Now, um, I am going to pick to a machine the throttle pedal, because that sounds like the most fun to do, right? My wife might share, uh, decide to do the brake pedal, but I wanna select the, the throttle pedal. So inside of Mender, you, you of course have the, the whole assembly here, but we can of course also just right click and we can open it up. And then we have the part, uh, this part by itself here. Now, what I'd like to point out is that with um, Inventor HSM, you have a cam tab right up here at the top and you will see you have the toolbar with all the different tools uh, that you need. Uh, so you can go ahead right here and machine uh, this part right here. You can also do it in assembly mode. And with Inventor HSM, there's actually absolutely no difference if you're doing in one or the other. So it's not like you have to learn uh, any difference by working inside an assembly. I sometimes prefer to work inside an assembly, like I have here, if I have the time. So actually here I place that throttle pedal on a table in a uh, orange wise and and i um so i can see where everything is right and you will see here that my stock is actually sitting on a couple of small parallels here always make sure you got the parallels underneath your stock so um that's i do this if i had the time if you don't have the time to you guys just gonna whip something out quick you maybe don't waste your time putting it inside an assembly but the nice thing about this is you see really what's happening outside the machine right now, I have already created the first, uh, the setup here, uh, and I'm gonna show you that when we flip the part over to clean off the backside, I'm gonna show you how to do a setup. Um, but I did, just wanted to show you quickly uh, how easy it is to apply the tool path uh, inside of Inventor HSM because it's so easy that, you know, you, you'll see here. So um, the first tool path I'm gonna apply to this part is I'm gonna apply a facing operation. And again, I'm gonna be using all the tool path that you get with a free package. Um, so uh, you face off the top, but it's really just kind of like taking a, a, a cut over the top of the part here. Uh, so I'm gonna go up and click on the facing operation. Now over here to the left, you will see that you get this property menu. And one thing I just wanna point out is that you have five tabs up here and they will always stay the same. Doesn't matter what type of tool path you get into, even if it's five axis. So, you know, it's, a, in, it's the same environment all the way through, uh, what really makes it easy. So the first thing you always get prompted to, to deal with 
is the tool. So if I so you always have to select the tool. It makes it extremely easy. You know, you can just do this in your sleep. It's always the same order you do things. So I'm going to select the tool here, and you get uh, prompted with the tool library. Now there's a bunch of uh, tools already coming inside of Inventor HSM, um, and really. You know, you can create your own in here too. Many times it's just easy just to take an existing tool and just modify it if you want to. Um, but I'm gonna go in here to the tutorial um, where there's a bunch and I'm gonna select what is called a face mill in here. So there's a 50 millimeter face mill here. I'm just gonna select it and hit enter. Um, and uh, I've selected that tool right now. Now, this face mill is a tool that uh, is, is pretty wide in diameter. It normally have like carbide inserts on it because it is uh, fairly big in diameter. You normally use it to face it off. Some shops don't have a facing face mill. Um, you can use a standard cutter if you want to. It's just gonna be a smaller step over, right? So that's really depending. If you don't have one, you don't need to, to go out and invest in one. Uh, but if your shop have one, it's nice to take off uh, with that. So I've selected my tool. That's step number one, right? Now, because we're inside of a 3D environment, the computer actually knows that there is something there. Talk about having you know, your computer start helping you out here. So if I just wanna face off the top of our stock here, of our part, I don't even have to select any geometry. The computer knows where the boundaries is because, well, it's a solid model. So no chaining, no picking. I can literally just go down here and hit the OK button just like that, and it would apply uh, the tool path to this part. Now, if you ever wanna go in and edit anything again, you can just go up on the operation up here. See, this is just like inside of Inventor, we kinda of like building a tree. You can just right click on it here and hit edit, and you're right back in again. And you will also see in here that we have the feats and speeds. Now, when it comes to feats and speeds, my and this is my personal recommend, recommendation is that you get a relationship with whoever you buy your cutters from your tools from okay so there's a lot of great uh, calculators out online and there's a lot of tools you can use out there but i have always preferred to use the, the information from directly the vendor of the tools that i've used a couple of reasons for that you know when it comes to feeds and speeds there can be a lot of different factors it can be how are you, how is the work holding how you're holding the part how you're holding the tool what type of machine do you have is it very rigid is it light um, and if you're making a good relationship with, with the guy you're buying your tools from, then they can actually give you some really good recommendations, feats and speeds, at least some conservative starting points. And the, well, maybe my main reason for doing this is if something goes wrong, if the cutter breaks, when you're using their feats and speeds, they are normally very happy to replace it for you. And, you know, that's kind of nice in, instead of, you know, that you have to call them up and you kind of like messed it up by yourself. So that's my recommendation on feats and speeds. Go out and make a good relationship with whoever you buy your tools from and you know you, you have a good place to start. So that would be here that you just put all that in. But again, I'm not gonna worry about it for this tutorial here. Get a relationship with your tool vendor, you should be all set. So again, just hitting okay. But that's all it really takes is selecting the tool and then if you just wanna dress off the top, that's hit okay and you're done. Now we can go in here and we can simulate it. So up here we have a simulate button and you will see down here that I have a play button down here. And if I click on that, you will see that it shows us the tool path that is gonna go through. So right here on the screen, you can get the confirmation that the tool is gonna to do what you expect it to do, just dressing off this part. And if I go down here, you will see there's different options. You can definitely play around with these, but I can also turn on stock. So you can actually see that piece of material put in there. We can actually see that we are machining uh, off the top here uh, to do that. Now, if we want to, at this point, uh, we are actually good to post our code to, to our machine. Um, and many times, like, you know, that can be, that can be the way you do it, that you just get the roughing operation going maybe, if you're roughing off a lot of material, you post that code out, and then you can go back again maybe and, and finishing up. But just to show you, if you go up here to the post uh, process tab, and we click on that, in here, you can select, there's a huge variety of posts in here, and uh, Autodesk actually have people on staff 
to help with anything. So if you have a machine, if you can't find your machine in here, uh, they will give you a post for free that will run on your machine, a generic post that can be you know, tweaked uh, and so forth. So just so you're aware of that. Now you can put in some kind of a, a program number in here, uh, depending on again, what kind of machine you have. And then I'm just gonna hit post and I'm just gonna throw this out on my busy desktop here. And uh, then you actually get uh, this very nice editor uh, here where you will see the code. And this is what the machine is after, right? I mean, all the other stuff that we just did is all steps to get to this because this is the code that the machine wants. Um, and uh, you will see here that we, we have the call out for the first tool. We have the tool chains. We have the spindle speed, G54. Um, and then you have the code here. Now, this is, of course, not very long code because we're just posting out that first facing operation. But, you know, that is really, you know, again, this is the important thing, right, to, to get this this code out. All right, so let's wrap up the first video here. We were able to very easily create uh, our first tool path, our facing operation, where we just take off the part. We were able to go through the simulation and kind of like verify that everything looks good. And then of course, the most important thing is to post the code because that's what the machine want, right? And don't forget that um, uh, Autodesk will support that in regards to, you know, minor post tweaks and, and that kind of stuff. So gonna end the first video here. Just take a quick break. Um, if you are interested, there is a subscribe button that you can subscribe so you always can make sure you get all the inventor um, stuff. So if you don't mind, would love that you subscribe to the channel that kind of like shows us a thumbs up. And then of course, let's get on to the second uh, video. Actually just place the link right up here. So you can just go ahead and click that link and we will take you to the next video. So hey, see you in a bit.